Hey guys, Eddie here with another video. Happy Saturday. Glad you guys are loving the videos on the Saturday uh, to complement the morning briefings. Really cool to see nearly 10,000 views on the, the US China video uh, and the why stock markets are rallying video did really well as well. So uh, I really hope you're appreciating the effort and um, us as an Amplify team collective putting out all this con content for you. Uh, we enjoy doing it. Um, so please leave a comment below if, you re if you're if you enjoying it, if you didn't like anything, uh, any recommendations for the future because it helps us plan our videos and things like that. Um, but today we're going to be discussing why traders, traders uh, are buying bankrupt stocks uh, like Hertz. Um, so essentially bankruptcy um, used to be a really bad thing for a company, as you can imagine, um, mean, meaning they're literally bankrupt. Um, but nowadays in the current market environment, uh, bankruptcy has been seen as a really positive thing um, in terms of retail taking a punt uh, on shares that have been severely depressed, um, like Hertz is down around 83% year to date. Um, and we'll talk about who lost a lot of money um, in a Hertz position, nearly $2 billion. Um, but at the moment, retail particularly are taking a punt on these Hertz shares uh, and essentially trying to sell this at, sell these shares to someone else at a higher price uh, later on. Um, so Hertz is literally bankrupt, just like firms like JC Penney, and obviously the coronavirus had a, uh, something to do with this. Um, but essentially, it's now trying to sell one billion in equity, okay, to uh, punters, investors, traders. Um, to finance the debt holders, the creditors that they cannot now afford to pay. So Jefferies, the investment bank, uh, is now leading uh, this capital raise and they's, they've essentially turned the bankruptcy process or the traditional one completely on its head. Um, so instead of raising capital money uh, for a bankrupt entity uh, by selling the most secured form of debt, um, so this is the most senior tranche. Um, this is secured by uh, assets of the company. Uh, so when a company goes bankrupt, uh, there are assets that are obviously worth something. They're actually going to the other end of the capital structure uh, and they're going to help us raise one billion in worthless equity. Essentially, it's worthless stock um, for equity holders to buy. And I just want to start um, this kind of video off with... Um, Jay Powell's quote that I read out last week in the video. Jay Powell, October 23rd, 2012. I think we are actually at the point of encouraging risk taking. Investors really do understand now uh, that we will be there to prevent serious losses. Uh, and obviously, this is ironic, um, like I talked about last week, that now we're in a current market environment. Uh, and this is definitely fueled by the Federal Reserve uh, and the kind of QE and the extraordinary measures they've taken to the point now that speculators, um, gamblers are now taking um, huge risk and literally gambling rather than investing um, and with the potential of huge returns, uh, of course, um, but really betting on names that are literally bankrupt. So I wrote this post on LinkedIn, and if you don't follow me, I'll put my link in the description um, below. Um, that's where I'm most active, and I write a lot of posts um, to do with current market trends, both micro and macro. Um, I'm also on Twitter as well, uh, Eddie Donmez. So again, my handle is below. Uh, I started to be a bit more uh, active on Twitter, and occasionally I say something uh, interesting. So worth a follow uh, for that one interesting tweet I do every week. Um, and this is a quote um, and a post I did on LinkedIn. As long as the music's playing, you've got to get up and dance. Uh, but when it stops, obviously things get complicated. Um, so what I do on a really day-to-day -day basis um, is I actually uh, am involved in Amplify trading, uh, but I'm a financial trainer. Uh, so I train on a range of different things. And this week we had our first summer intake in uh, for the June 8th start date. So if you're a student, go and check that out uh, below amplifytrading.com forward, uh, forward slash students. Um, but I've run a few simulations, so an equity uh, research simulation, uh, an M&A simulation, sales and trading, lots of different things. But actually what I've been doing this week is teaching about fundamental analysis. Um, and it couldn't have come obviously at a more interesting time. So in the current market climate, um, lots of stocks, particularly those growth names, those tech names like Zoom, 
Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, you know the drill by now. Um, they're completely disconnected from the world and what one would consider to be their intrinsic value. Okay, When you're producing a financial model, your job uh, is to find an intrinsic value and that obviously may differ uh, from what the market is pricing it at. Um, so it's worth at this point in time, um, like I put in the post, reminding yourself that markets can be extremely irrational uh, and capital markets, like we've seen, especially from this announcement, um, are not perfect. But this euphoria uh, that we're seeing at the moment, it just can't last forever. There is a point where the music stops and things will get complicated. And we had uh, a kind of flavor of that this week uh, where the most major indices were down 6%. Uh, and this was mainly um, a bit of doom and gloom from the Federal Reserve uh, and their FOMC meeting, but also the real fear of the second wave um, that is now starting to rear its head uh, in Texas, Arkansas, uh, and again in China. They're now starting to report cases. There's some discussion of, is this a second wave or is this just a continuation of the first wave? Um, but really, uh, markets are completely disconnected uh, from the fundamentals. So names like Hertz, JCPenney, they're bankrupt. Uh, and as you can see by this chart, uh, they filed for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy um, on trading on March 22nd, and their share price correctly um, fell from around $3 to around $0.40. Cents. Uh, and then since then, <laughs> they've raised, they uh, increased and punters were going long on the stock and it reached around $6 a share. Um, so a huge increase, uh, huge gains to be made there. Um, and just it's worth saying that um, obviously they make no money and they can't pay their creditors, but companies more famously like Tesla, HubSpot, DocuSign, Appfolio, they're trading at close to 300 times 2021 forward earnings. And it's insane to think about when you're forecasting or you're looking at a P forward P multiple or something like that, when there's so much uncertainty about uh, coronavirus and the second wave, lockdowns, things like that. But I think it's worth noting that as long as you recognize that this is the current state of play and markets are extremely irrational, then that's okay. You know, as long as you recognize that. Um, and this kind of uh, growth trade versus value has absolutely trounced uh, value uh, for the last 10 years since the crisis. Um, and we've seen some cyclicals starting to participate, uh, but this growth outperformance looks to continue. Of course, this growth is like the Zooms and Googles, not the Hertz, but it does beg, beg the question, who's going to be left holding the bag when the party's over and the mu music stops uh, and then reality steps in? So it's most likely at the end of this video, you understand that more, but it's going to be the retail players uh, that are just taking punts uh, on these bankrupt names. So Hertz looks at the market right now and all it sees is these irrational traders that are willing to buy this stock um, and raise equity um, for their restructuring process. And actually what they're going to do is raise this equity to pay off these creditors that have the most senior secured debt. Um, but this equity is worthless, uh, or most likely it's going to be worthless. So Hertz, what do they do? Um, they're essentially, they provide airport, uh, you know, vehicle rental, leasing services, um, US rental car, international rental car, all of the operations, uh, and they are down 83% um, year to date. And they have now won this approval uh, court approval to try and sell 1 billion in worthless stock um, to these uh, day traders. And it's kind of eerily like um, the fraud, uh, the Enron, uh, but also more recently like Moderna after pumping their stock price, uh, then followed on with an equity offering. Uh, and obviously the uh, vaccine wasn't, was only on eight uh, people and wasn't as successful as they forecasted yet their CEO and uh, board members made millions or whoever was selling um, those Moderna shares. But Judge Mary Woolruth, uh, and I think she's definitely the biggest culprit here. He, she has now ruled that Hertz can go ahead with this offering. Um, 
and it could take in as much as one billion uh, in this stock raise, um, according to the underwriter, which, like I referred to, uh, is Jefferies. And Jefferies are going to make 3% on this offering um, if it finds enough um, equity investors, mainly from Robinhood or uh, retail at the moment, uh, by selling this uh, equity. But Hertz uh, confidently would have to make a disclosure. Uh, in any pr prospectus that goes along with this kind of offering with debt or equity for this common stock, highlighting that an investment in Hertz common stock entails uh, significant ri risks. Uh, okay, yeah, including the risk that the common stock could be ultimately be worthless. So it does beg question, is this ethical at all? Uh, and I would argue that, uh, in my opinion, the judge that has passed this he is not protecting uh, re retail investors at all. Um, the more sophisticated credit uh, creditors, debt holders, are basically the money is going to flow ironically in the Robin Hood scenario from these equity investors to these creditors uh, when or if this equity ultimately becomes uh, worthless. Um, so why is Jeffrey's trying to propose this deal essentially um, because the market prices have obviously reflected um, the point where they could raise new equity um, and the volumes in this common stock um, have skyrocketed really since they uh, announced um, this bankruptcy um, and the, the, the way they're going to raise this capital is far superior than any uh, debtor in possession financing. And this is a, uh, a more confusing uh, term. Um, but unlike this debtor uh, in possession financing, this common stock issuance, this would not issue any restrictive covenants. And covenants are essentially um, some legal kind of papers that go along with the creditors uh, and things like that, um, where, you know, once they issue this debt security, the liquidity ratio of this company may not go over X times, or there's certain things that uh, debt holders have in this uh, covenant that would restrict the company from raising more debt and things like that. So it wouldn't raising equity wouldn't impair any creditors um, or the or the debt holders, uh, and there's no obviously repayment obligations. Um, unlike debt, it's a legal contract. You have to repay this debt, whereas stock issuance obviously. Um, is at the bottom of the capital structure, and there's no legal requirement to pay back uh, equity holders. Um, so something like this has never been done before, um, just because in more rational times, when a company is bankrupt, that common stock is worthless, right? Um, but in the rational time we are in, this may have some value, uh, or at least uh, retail investors can make a quick um, punt on this. Um, it's worth kind of just uh, distinguishing the two, between the two forms of bankruptcy. So you have a chapter 11, and this is essentially a reorganization of the, the capital structure. Uh, and it's essentially asking um, the chance to, to recover while it makes a reorganization of the capital structure. So think debt equity, things like that. So if the company does survive, and it is possible, um, your shares may uh, be worth something. But the company can uh, cancel your existing shares, uh, and obviously that renders them worthless. So definitely, if you're going to take a punt on anything like this, um, know the risks. If you uh, file a Chapter 7, and this is a liquidation, this is different from a Chapter 11 reorganization, the company uh, is finito, and, and so are your shares. Your, com your common shot, uh, stock is worth nothing uh, once that company enters uh, liquidation because you as an equity holder are at the bottom of the capital structure and I'll kind of talk about this visually um, just later on okay um, and after all uh, after this company's filed bankruptcy it's filed it for a reason right it can't meet its interest payments to the most senior uh, debt holders uh, and I've actually got a, a finite value later in the video of how much debt is actually um, outstanding already OK, um, so this also means that unless all this existing debt is repaid in full, um, there is some unprecedented agreement, essentially, between the equity tranche uh, and the and the debtors. Um, the preposition equity is essentially worthless. Um, so let's go into the capital structure. So uh, after a quick look, Hertz have 16.4 billion uh, in debt outstanding. OK, 
Okay, so these are the senior secured uh, debt holders, deposits, uh, essentially the top of the credit structure, uh, the cap capital structure, and these essentially are safer than holding equity. So if we take a step back, there's less credit risk if you uh, invest in a debt security. You get a lower coupon or a rate of return from that debt, um, but it's safer, okay? It's secured in a senior secured uh, debt instrument uh, by assets, okay? So you are most likely gonna get paid back. And then as you go down the capital structure, you see senior unsecured debt, which is senior to the equity uh, and the preferred equity, but it's not secured by assets. Um, so obviously in an in a event of a bankruptcy. And as you go down the capital structure, just know that as a common equity holder, you are at the bottom uh, of the capital structure. You are last to get paid in the event of a bankruptcy. Um, so when you're investing in this type of stuff, um, definitely know and educate yourself. And obviously through Amplify Trading, um, we provide training on this, but um, do your reading, do your research, uh, know the risk, because if it does go wrong, um, you, you, know, you would have, have liked to have known this um, prior to, to this um, mistake. So Robin Hood activity, we have to talk about this. So when uh, mainly on Mar uh, Monday, the markets hit an absolute, you know, uh, blow off top um, and the Hertz shares went to six dollars and the market cap for a bankrupt entity was around 900 million. Uh, and it's around it's up around 400 percent on the week. Um, so Robin Hood is essentially this retail trading platform, uh, mainly in America. So for the UK listeners, it's a bit like a, an IG or a trading 212. Um, and they report uh, or you can go on Robin Hood Tracker and see the names that are most traded, essentially in popularity increases or decreases to the positions. So you can see at the top uh, Nikola, which is the electric vehicle Tesla-like company that makes no revenue uh, and obviously speculators were betting on this becoming the next Tesla, um, but they make no money. Uh, Hertz again, uh, number two, uh, 75,826 uh, increase in shares over the last week or holdings. Um, so they're up 400% in the week. So this is why people are trading this. There are potential gains there, of course, um, but it is uh, with not without uh, its risks, but essentially now the common stock is worthless. Um, so 151,000, I think, 800 users decided to go long on this uh, insolvent company. Carl Icahn, uh, obviously made famous by buying a lot of U.S. equities after the Trump uh, victory, when everyone else was selling off, uh, selling their equity positions. He's lost two billion. Uh, on Hertz, and he was holding it uh, from a long time before these kind of retail traders got involved. Um, and he cut his position and lost two billion. So there's obviously lots of jokes uh, going around Twitter um, saying that you know people like Carl Icahn and uh, Warren Buffett are idiots, um, and this game is easy, and you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, but obviously, just remember people like Warren Buffett. And Carl Icahn are hugely successful. Um, Warren Buffett has made over 85 billion uh, in his career. Um, so don't count uh, these guys out just yet, uh, just after. Uh, you've had a few good days. So legends in the industry. Um, but he obviously took a $2 billion uh, loss uh, on Hertz. Looking at the financials at a really high level, their total debt to equity ratio is 1,381% a higher ratio being worse, uh, a long-term debt to equity ratio of 1,260%, uh, higher being worse again, and earnings for interest uh, and tax over an interest expense or an interest coverage ratio of 0 0.7 times. So these are the financials that really bring it down to earth. They can't, they can only cover their interest payments and 0 0.7 times. Their total debt to EBITDA, 11.7 times. Their EBIT minus CapEx divided by interest expense is not meaningful, okay? So that really um, is meaning it's below zero. So the financials are poor. Um, just remember when if you are investing in this. So whose fault is this? And this is a tweet from my account, that's my handle. Um, if you are interested, um, 
I've basically argued that the judge is mainly at, uh, at fault here. Um, and I don't believe it's ethical and they should be protecting retail investors um, that are unsophisticated um, because the money is simply going to flow from these retail investors uh, to the creditors, uh, which are more sophisticated investors. Um, sure, whenever you buy an equity or you set an up, a, up an account, you tick a box saying you understand the risk of investing. But unfortunately, I don't think people are reading this type of thing. And um, the next slide uh, really says it all. Uh, and there are huge potential losses. So, of course, whenever you're looking at social media and stuff, you only see the winners. Um, and if you are trading without proper risk management tools, you can obviously lose huge amounts of money. So just be aware of that. Um, but whose fault is this? Obviously, the coronavirus has exacerbated the situation. Everyone's in lockdown. Lockdown. Everyone's bored. Uh, you know, stock markets are making new highs, rightly or wrongly. You make up your own mind. Uh, price discovery has just completely been distorted, uh, really, by I think the Federal Reserve uh, and this kind of fear of missing out uh, bubble and these irrational, uh, feverish retail investors uh, just jumping on uh, this asset bubble that the Federal Reserve, by growing their balance sheet. Um, has created. And I think Jeffries are just, you know, they're just advisors in this transaction. Hertz, again, um, could argue that they are the um, an, a bad party in this. Um, but really, I think the, the judge that has passed this should be, you know, should be looked at. Um, but it is this retail uh, participation uh, and they should be protected, in my opinion. So what happens next? And this is, again, the funny meme from uh, Wall Street bets. Um, no institutional investors are going to touch this um, new equity offering. Um, but obviously, Jeffries and Hertz, they all know that's not their audience. It's these retail investors. Um, so just a word of warning, you know, be careful uh, if you are taking a punt on any, any of these things. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, slightly different to usual looking at a, a single stock. Um, there are others as well. Um, if you like this video, uh, leave your comments below. Really appreciate it. Obviously, it takes some time to make uh, on a Saturday. Um, so if you enjoy it, if you want to see anything else, great. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, uh, do so below. Uh, and obviously, take a, take a look out uh, at the website uh, if you were interested in anything else that Amplify Trading are doing. Um, but take care. Have a lovely weekend. I hope you enjoyed the video.